Hello, everybody. Welcome in to the Sportscast, brought to you by the Outspoken Network, guys. Welcome in. It's your host, Brian. And we got special guest, Paul, from Bearski Films on. Paul, what's going on, brother? What's going on, Brian? How you doing tonight? Thanks for the invite. I am good, sir. I, you know, I appreciate you filling in. You, you, you know, I, I don't want to say special guest anymore. You're, you're basically a full member of the show. <laughs> pretty, pretty regular, yeah. I don't want, yeah. I don't want to impose or anything either. You know, I don't want you to get sick of me here. So, and then uh, I see in chat, Ant Mass is here. Bear down. Ant Mass is one of uh, one of my dedicated followers. I always appreciate him. Always participates in chat. He's a good dude. So, yeah, awesome, it was, uh, awesome. It was a good week of football, man. It was a great week of football. Um. NFC, man, we just keep winning. Uh, you know, we, we, I don't know if you really care about the, our division as a whole being strong, but uh, we're representing, we're representing. So thanks, uh, Ant Mass, for jumping on. I'm, a, um, I know you're a Bears fan. I'm sorry. I, uh, you know, I'm a Packer fan, but you know, we'll get along. Hey, Cat, what's going on, Cat? Cat, um, Cat's been on our show for quite a while, too. So thanks for jumping on, Cat. Um, yeah, Craig is, I don't know, it's hard for him to jump on on Tuesdays with his work schedule. So, um, you know, keep your Tuesdays free. You might be a, a regular on here, uh, Paul. But um, we, go ahead. Yeah, I, no, I just wanted to kind of say just about the NFC North. Man, did you see that Vikings-Lions game? No, because my team was playing the same time, so wow. I did not. <laughs> Dude, that uh, was a battle. Those Both those teams are so damn impressive. It is just, it's... It's kind of a little bit, um, I don't know, I'm kind of a little bit worried about them because they are so damn good. Like, it, yeah. it was it was a battle. I saw someone say that, man, they were a Bears fan. They're like, just our luck. We're found, we're, we're having a good year, but everyone else in our division's great, too. So, yeah, it's kind of funny, you know. And, and oh, is that, is, is that what you said? Uh, maybe I saw it on your yeah, page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I've, I've been saying it a couple times. Like, you know, we got everything <laughs> finally going right for us, and yet here we are, fourth in the division. So it's kind of maddening in a way where we feel good about where we're at. We feel good about the team. However, this division is so damn good that it, it just it, – it hasn't ever been like this. And, of course, it, it has happened right. on a year where we're doing Bears it all ourselves. Yeah. Well – and I keep going back and forth. Like at the beginning of the year, I, at the beginning before the season started, I said, I, I said Packers are going to win it, but a lot of people probably think the Lions. And then halfway through, I'm going, really, any any of these teams could win it. Um, I think the Lions and Vikings are obviously strong. Obviously, I think the Packers are strong, and the Bears. This is the best Bears team I've seen in in a while. So, you know, um, but. Yeah, four and two on any other division. Uh, Ant Mass says y'all would be first place then. So it, it, it's kind of interesting. And we'll see what it'd be crazy if the whole NFC North made the playoffs this year. I know that's a possibility, and I've heard yeah. that thrown around. Um, yeah, no, we're going to beat up on each other here. Yeah, we all play each other at the end of the year. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting. So, all right, let's get our week seven takeaways. And one of my takeaways from week seven is. The Jets still can't get the job done. They bring in Aaron Rodgers to be their savior. The coach ain't working out. They fight. We talked about that. They fired him. It was like already. You're giving up already on this guy with Aaron Rodgers. Um, they played a little better, but they still lost to the Bills. They go out and get Devontae Adams, and who is a great wide receiver. Well, you know, don't get me wrong, great wide receiver. And I was interested to see that the connection again. But it just didn't work out. They got blown out by the Steelers. Russell Wilson starts it's his season with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They score 37 points. So I'd say it's pretty good. I know some of some of that came on the defensive side of the ball. Is this Rodgers? Is this is this do you think it's Aaron Rodgers that something's missing? Oh yeah, definitely. And like, you know, they were one of my picks during the preseason to be one of the better teams this year to be competing for a Super Bowl and um Part of that is just my Bears PTSD because I've seen Rodgers be so damn good and do it all and put it all on his shoulders. And I said, if this guy's got any gas left in a tank, like we're going to see it. And he doesn't. It's empty. It's past empty. He's broken down on the side of the road. You know what I mean? At this point, yeah. like, uh, it's. And, I was you know, in the same boat as you with that and thought. It's, it's 
the thing is, like, you know, you want to believe in the guy just due to his history and everything like that. But this league is so tough and it's so consistent. I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of no surprise. You're doing ayahuasca during the offseason. You're not practicing with your team. What do yeah. you think that's going to result yeah. in more success? No, like, you got to grind, man. The grind is part of the yeah. deal. And he doesn't want to do that anymore. And clearly, it's affected them. 100%. And, and we yeah. talked about this a little bit ago, too. And a big part of it, I believe, is he handcuffs the offense because he doesn't do pre-snap motion. He hates it. He's old school. Line up, and I'm going to read the defense, and I'm going to beat you. And um, he still can make a good throw. He still has, you know. Yeah, but it's stubborn but it's, to yes. progress and get more help from other areas and yeah. be utilized in clutch moments. That's really what he should be. He should be leaning a lot more on his run game, and he's not, and things like that. He just refuses to change, but he has changed. He's not the same Aaron Rodgers he was. Yeah, and, and on paper, they before they got Adams, they had offensive weapons. They have a good, uh, you know, maybe their offensive line is not the best. It got better this la- of the offseason. But so just adding one more weapon to the, the thing, and obviously it, it's not working out too well. They're you know, they're two and four. Um, he came out with his famous relaxed speech. Let's get back on track. But they're going to turn it around pretty quickly or they're going to find themselves with, with not better off than what they had last year with, with Wilson as a quarterback. Or uh, was it, what's his face? Um, it was a quarterback last year. Zach Wilson, yeah, I had it right. Wilson, yeah. So right now, yeah. they were better last year. They had a better record at this point with, with Zach Wilson than Aaron Rodgers. So, and they've added more to the team. That's absolutely insane. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, you know, in this league, you can't be one dimensional like that. The more ways you can win, the more you will win. So, yep. All right, Paul, what's a takeaway you got, you got from week seven? Um, I, I got a couple of friends who are Steelers fans and, you know, my history as a Bears fan with Justin Fields, I saw a lot of his play over three years, and, you know, I have two fans in particular. One was for starting Russ, and the other one was totally against it. And my takeaway is that um, the Steelers made the right move by starting Russell Wilson. I mean, Mm -hmm. Fields is still, in a way, kind of a project, and you got a guy that's been in the moments, been through the playoffs, won Super Bowls, Long term, that's your better option. Um, it took a hell of a lot of guts from a very real coach uh, to make that move. Heavily scrutinized, it's totally the right move in my opinion. So props to them. It's a hundred percent right, right move. And and their record wasn't bad with Fields, but he wasn't doing enough. He wasn't he wasn't the reason they were winning, and he was probably the reason they were losing. If if, if I said it. They should have beat the. They should have beat the Cowboys. Um, if Russell Wilson was the quarterback, I believe they would. They owe it to Russ to being a veteran to give him another shot. Because what we saw him, him in Denver, he looked like he couldn't no longer play. He looked like he was lost on the football field, which yeah, is crazy. St- statistically, he still didn't have a bad season in Denver. It's just value wise for the amount of money he was getting paid, he didn't live up to it but when you look at it on paper at least the the stats weren't all bad i mean i think he only threw nine interceptions 27 touchdowns it's not a bad year from a guy yeah he you know um he, he looked good the other night making some deep throws making some good reads moving around in the pocket i think they're better they're, they're gonna be a better football team going forward with him and the way they handled the jets was I, you know i turned it off i don't think i watched the whole game i think it turned it all about halftime it was still close but I woke up the next morning and was like, holy crap, they do I mean, out of the domination, this de- the defense of the Steelers. And if you get a quarterback that can be be that what Russell Wilson was for him and not lose him games, they they're they're a dangerous football team. Definitely, and you're gonna need to be that if you expect to make any kind of impact in the playoffs and have any kind of success in the playoffs against the best AFC teams. So yeah, um, Definitely, they can't just rely on athleticism alone. They need a guy that's, you know, been through those moments. And like I said, Russ has a huge resume. Um, oh. I would feel much better counting on him in, in those clutch moments. So, And we usually have a fan on our show, uh, follower Derpy, 
and he's a Steelers fan. He was kind of giving me heck because I was paid on the Steelers this year with Justin Fields because he's not good. Um, I'm interested if he jumps on later when we talk about it, but uh, it's not that I don't like the Steelers or anything. It's just I've seen Fields. I've seen him for a couple of years with the Bears. I know he's not good, so I didn't expect you guys. I, I still stand by it when they had a winning record with him. I'm like, it's your defense winning this game. So, um, but Fields is he hit a wall in his progress when it came to quarterback play mentally, and you just saw that. You know, one is he's been hit a lot, and so is Russell Wilson. But Russell Wilson is at the later end of his career where he can mentally, I think, handle it better. But for Fields, it's like it, it seemed to mess him up because now he's not willing to go through his progressions. He's afraid of getting hit, right? So it's one, maybe two, and take off, like, or start scrambling around. And, and these aren't planned scrambles. These are just, you know, spur of the moment stuff. And then he's getting sacked back there left and right. And, yeah, yeah from time to time there's a he would take some play killer sacks. He is, he is athletic. I mean, he's six foot four, two twenty. 220. Runs as fast as Tyree Kill. That's it's a boulder coming at you when he's out in the field. But um, as far as consistency goes, he just struggled with that a whole mm-hmm. lot. So, you know, on our show, we said the best thing for him. And believe me, I want the best thing for him. I like him as a person and everything. Like, he's a genuine stand-up guy. But um, he needs a year off. Like, he needed to sit this year, I felt, with, you know, with little expectations. And for him to just start again right away was kind of like, ah, I get it. It's due to injury, but what you really need is to sit, watch, calm down, let that pressure get off you. Um, and you know, and the other thing is like he might be better suited um, as a backup, like on the Ravens. You know, they yeah. completely changed their entire offense for Lamar to kind of adapt <laughs> to what he does best. I think that's kind of Excuse what Fields me. needs too, because in that typical West Coast offense, he's just not very productive, and I don't think he's going to get much better at it. But I will give him this. He's handled this like a champ. He said everything right yeah. they went after they benched him. That he has, he's like, if I played good enough, there wouldn't be a question. But obviously, he, there's room for me to grow and be, be better. So, um, he's a good dude. That's what I mean. He's not going to give you yeah. any trouble off the field or anything like that. So, all right. One of my takeaways, and I know this team didn't play the Dallas Cowboys, but the panic meter. Where is the panic meter for Dallas? Is it an overreaction or an underreaction to say that the Dallas Cowboys season's over after going three and three? Um, I'm gonna start it off with saying I think it's a little bit of little bit of an overreaction at three and three to say the season's complete washed. But I don't see with the roster that they have. I don't see it getting better. I don't see them winning the division. They might make the playoffs. I don't know. It, right now, it's very, very fuzzy for the Dallas Cowboys because even with even when the team was healthy, right? They want to say they're, it's because of injuries. Okay. Even when your team was healthy, it didn't look all that great, right? You got Marcus Parsons and, and Lawrence uh, on the defensive uh, line. You still didn't look that great. And your two wins were what the the Cleveland Browns and the New York Giants. That's those are terrible teams. And you, yeah, you did beat the Steelers with Justin Fields, but they come off the bye. They play the 49ers, which the 49ers are are injury. You know they they have the injury bug going on too. But I really think it starts with this next game. If they come out and get get killed like they like they did against the Lions um, and the Ravens manhandled them at home, then I think we're full full on panic mode in Dallas. I, I really think if they get blown away. Now, do I, I don't think they're going to beat the 49ers, I mean, you know, but can they hang in there with them? Is that a moral victory for the Dallas Cowboys? Because I think that everyone's getting ready to, to hit that panic mode here in Dallas. Honestly, um, I would have hit the panic button in the offseason. I would have made made a coaching change and said we need something different. The talent looks like it's there, right? So what can we change 
to improve this thing. And to me, it would have been coaching. I think that would have given more life and everything like that. But um, now you saw them stick by McCarthy. And okay, so now you're three and three. The division's not that great, in my opinion. So just for the sake of yeah. consistency, they're riding this thing out. Okay, I mean, the money's going to Dak Prescott. So it's on him. He's got to do it. You know what I mean? He's got to go out yeah. there and compete with guys like Lamar. And he's got to, you know, they got to be able to compete with these top tier teams because they're paying a quarterback top tier money. So, um, yeah, definitely these next two games, I believe, are going to dictate a lot. I don't know when their bye week is, though, but um, they just had it last week. Oh, they just had it last week. Okay, so, yeah, the next two weeks are going to dictate a lot because then you have the trade deadline coming up. So, you know, if you're five and three, that's one thing. If you're three and five, then do you shop around Micah Parsons? Do you shop around some of these guys and start? Uh, you know, kind of a rebuild. So, yeah, I mean, listen, three and three, they're riding out the consistency thing. I get it. I wouldn't panic just yet because that's not what their game plan was. But me personally, I would have tried to been a step ahead and say, hey, this thing isn't good enough. And you saw that against a real team like the Lions. Like, the Lions are good enough. And you're you're nowhere near that. That's where you're going to have to be. So, from my point of view, I would have tried to be in a step ahead and done some changes this offseason but hey they want to do yeah. what they want to do and, and, and jerry jones getting killed um because the radio talking heads are talking about this too you don't have a running back your running back room is garbage it's not gonna work why didn't you sign derrick henry why didn't you do this and he went off on him last week and uh it was quite entertaining to hear but yeah. then you got the 49ers, the Falcons, the Eagles, and the Texans in the next four games. None of those are cakewalks. Um, depends no. on which Falcons team shows up. They're a little bit inconsistent, but the Eagles are going to play you tough. They're divisional. They're divisional, and the Texans are, are a top ten team in the NFL. Um, so the schedule doesn't get any easier. Yeah, and you know, I I said this, and I say it. I feel like a broken record sometimes, but like for any team to go off and win a Super Bowl, you need three things: you need to be talented. You need to stay healthy and you get you need to get lucky, you know, yeah. and sometimes that luck can be really the defining factor. Like you look at the Eagles. I mean, they their starting quarterback went down. They had Nick Foles in there. They yeah. got Super Bowl MVP three years later. He was third string on the Bears. Three years later, Doug Peterson, their head coach, was fired. Right. So so they got really lucky in that moment and carried them all the way. Um, when you look at the Cowboys, they have talent. They're fairly healthy, you know what I mean? But it just feels like they're going to really need to get lucky because that talent isn't coming together and giving you any kind of real uh, real progress or real production on the field. So um, can they do it? Yeah. I mean, this, this group of guys has been together long enough. So could they turn it around and change it? Yeah. And if luck goes their way a little bit, they, they still have a shot. You know what I mean? But I don't feel great about it whatsoever. So... Yeah, you're right. None of those games are cakewalks. It is any given Sunday. I could see them potentially winning all four in individual matchups, but it's just not going to happen, right? Like, uh, you're most likely going to be get beat up on a little bit unless the ball starts bouncing your way a little bit and you figure things out really fast in Dallas. So, I knew Ryan. Oh, I knew it, Ryan. Ryan Sims says, how are we healthy? Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend like I – Follow Dallas, yeah, to the core. I don't think they, any team is fully healthy, but I think your main stars are still there, right? Well, I, I, I will say this with Ryan: he, they're missing Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence on the defensive line. Okay, and they're missing um, their cornerback in in um, Bland. They're missing a wide receiver who they never throw the ball to anyway. So, but here's the bottom line. With the, when the, with the Dallas Cowboys, Brian, we were talking about the panic meter for Dallas, overreaction, underreaction. If if this team season's over, I said a little bit of an overreaction, but they start got to start winning after the bye. But I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I don't give I don't give teams the benefit of the doubt unless they lose their starting quarterback, because every team's injured. So I'm not gonna really give you too much of a pass there, Ryan, on it. Um, and then. The other thing is, like, what kind of injury? Like, are you out for the year? 
which which my bad. I actually I didn't do my homework. I didn't realize Micah Parsons was out. That is huge. Like that should be one of your guys that's out there contributing to your team's success and, and your team wins. I know. But yeah, like uh, you said, every team does have injuries. I'm talking about big time injuries that are going to really affect you through the end of the year. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I mean, yeah. And, and, and they have had our top four edge starters, middle linebacker and Blandon cooks. You, you don't even throw the ball to cooks. He's not even, he's a nobody. He's a guy that's, who's underachieved coming over to Dallas. So I'm and not you're paying the quarterback. So I expect him to, lead this thing i get your defense is a little down but we'll see three and three i think it's a big a big game against the 49ers can you stay with them i don't expect you to win but can you stay with them um any other team we should be hitting the panic meter on paul that you think of that that might be one yeah. panic meter i mean i think we talked about the jets right yeah so that's yeah. that's one in my opinion that's right up there um Cleveland Browns might actually be better off without Deshaun Watson, but they should definitely be in sell now mode for sure. And sell now. Some, yeah, we've heard some talks. Isn't it funny how, you know, the owners in this league did not want the Browns to make this move for Deshaun Watson to give him all this guaranteed money. They paid him $1 million for his first year in case he gets suspended for a couple of weeks. That only affects that year's salary so they they really did a deal for him and backloading this contract and everything and it costs you so much in draft capital and everything but i don't know if they ever really considered the fact that it might cost them miles garrett in the long run and that's what it's looking like they put themselves in a situation yeah. where their top stars don't want to be there you know what i mean um i think uh the jaguars even though they won this last game um, I've seen sale mode on the Trevor, shopping block a little bit. Yes, Terry Lawrence mode. is not good. Correct. So I, you know, I, I'd be I pressing think the panic button a little bit. There. I think I the trust. Bengals should be pa pa passing the, the pressing that button. The Bengals they barely beat the Browns this weekend by a touchdown. They did, but they I have a quarterback. A I know, ago, I know you did, and I told you they're gonna win the next four in a row. So we're two in. They've won the two. They're doing what I said. They're gonna be a five and four team. I don't believe. Are they? Impressive. I just don't know. I, I don't know about the Bengals. And I look, I love Joe Burrow. I think he's one of the best um, in football. But this, I don't know. It just feels like something's missing. Is it the defense? They say the defense isn't very, very good. Bro, okay. Hold on. Ryan's trying to get Ryan, try He to is trying to. Lions trying to own it. the North. Bro, they just whooped you all 49 and 47 and 9. They own you too, apparently. Um, are they, they the best good team? Are they the best team in our division? Probably best team in the NFC. Probably. probably right now. Probably the best team in the NFC. I say Packers are right there with them. Packers, they just beat the Texans, five and two. Oh, um, Vikings are five and one. No, oh, God, I me. Mean, the Texans are a good dag of football team. We'll get into that in one second here, sir. All right. Um, but a lot of people have owned the Bears in the last couple of years, so you know. You know what? <laughs> hey, bring it at me. Listen, um, oh, I, I I don't feel that good about your Packers. I really don't. Um, you don't. You don't. You know. You don't have to because you, you. You're. I don't think you're ever going to feel good about the Packers. But oh, I have in the past. Yeah. Let's talk about it because that's my next thing. Packers defense was great. We shut down Stroud. Stroud had 87 passing yards. He's over on the sideline throwing his helmet on the ground because we're frustrating the hell out of him. We're getting we're getting pressure. I did not expect that from our defense. Um, you got you got you got Diggs over there trying to fight the whole Packer team before the game because he never does good against Alexander. Locks him down. He can't he can't play against Alexander. It's, it's fantastic. And we finally got a kicker. Oh my gosh, we finally got a kicker. Thank you. Thank you. We finally got a kicker. I didn't think we were going to win that game. I thought the Texans were going to run the clock out, kick the chip game, game winning field goal, but they couldn't get a first down. Our kicker hits the game winner. And it's great. And oh, okay. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Texans are overrated. Don't forget they lost their number one wide well, receiver. You look at their first of all and the teams that they beat, Brian. 
all the teams, all their wins come from beating on, you know, two and five and one and six teams. First of all, I don't want to hear that. Last year it was the Texans are going to be the next best thing. They're going to be amazing. This coach and this quarterback and Stroud's better than love. And he's going to be amazing. And what do we do? We shut him down. We beat him. I'm hanging that one on my, on my win column, baby. That was a great win. Our defense played great. If you take away the, the interception when they scored on and the muffed punt, then it's not even that close of a football game. Um, so, Ryan, don't give me the Texans are overrated and they're not as good. Everyone was hyping them up last year, saying how good this team's going to be and how good this quarterback is, and we just beat them. So, I'm going to take that with, uh, with, with some – I'm going to say it with my chest. That was a good football win. You you should feel good about that. They are – what they were a 5-1 and one football team coming into Green Bay. So, obviously, that is not an easy feat by any means. And, you know, you beat, like, what, the fifth, sixth best AFC team? Good job. Um, in even our division, I truly think this, the, the way the standings are set right now are actually pretty accurate. Um, other than the Vikings being on top, I think the Lions are top dog. This Vikings team, man, I don't want to believe it. But I have to now just because what they're showing me. They're for real. Um, your Packers are pretty good this year. Uh, Jordan Love, to me, still – is I know you you don't like Jordan Love. Let's get on. Let's I get past like that. Him. It's it's not that I Ryan, like him. It's just I see what I see. Like I gave Rogers all the praise in the world. I hated Rogers. I know you do. But I, I knew you, how you good he was. I just don't think Jordan Love is all that good. <laughs> I think you still see a lot of sloppy football from him. I still see... trash take Ryan. Trash take. And no, uh, it might be accurate. And then that's I, trash you know, take. Trash uh, take. Look, well, look. And I'm going to say this to Packer fans, too. You obviously didn't watch Jordan Love in college. Jordan Love threw a lot of interceptions in college. He's going to throw interceptions. We did. We lived through it with Brett Favre. He's aggressive, though. I'll take that any day. Now, Rodgers, Rodgers was great. Rodgers had a, such a insane, record-breaking not turn over the ball ratio. It was it was insane. Like no one's gonna be beat that ever again. We can't expect it to be Rodgers. But Rodgers at time would not risk it. He would not be aggressive. Love loves aggressive. And I like it. I'm gonna live with the interceptions because at the end of the day, I believe he's going to make the throws he needs to. Yeah, so, and I think that's where we differ. I think in those clutch mm-hmm. moments is where he's going to fail instead of succeed but i mean but he'll get you to those moments where you need to be clutch in order to win the game that says a lot i mean you know like we said all four of these teams in this division might be playoff teams potentially but um but i just you know i look at the lions i look at the vikings they're just way better than the packers or the bears i don't i wouldn't say way better but um, I don't know. We I don't. We should have beat Minnesota. Bottom line, we didn't. I know, but we should have beat them. I'm not. I'm not saying they're should've, way better than us. Lions. Lions are tough. Team. Lions are. Lions are the better football team. Um. Then I, I I will say it probably goes Lions, Green Bay, Vikings, and then the Bears. But um, Ryan says that your quarterback's a bust already. Yeah. Well. Ryan doesn't seem to be too smart, he's so. he's hating on somebody some he's he's mad that his team is the Dallas Cowboys. Pretty um much. you got any other takeaways from week seven? Um no, not really. Um like I said, it was really just that that Vikings Lions, how good they are. I, I was just really impressed with that game and just the battle and, and how good those coaches are coaching both sides of the ball up. It's it's really impressive. Um the way Jared Goff is playing. I am not a Jared Goff fan at all. But you got to give credit when credit's due. I mean, I feel like the Rams literally traded him away so they could win one. And uh, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. playing He's playing just as good as he was playing last year. So uh, he is in the prime of his career They're playing some damn good football. And even with all the exotic blitz packages they were throwing at him and stuff, he was still productive and getting it done. So he, I came away very impressed with both teams.
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I believe the Vikings still. I just I don't know. I don't know. Now it's uh it's a little annoying that uh that what's his face? Um our running back is over there doing good, but yeah, Aaron Jones. But our our uh I do have one more. Our thing. running back's actually been pretty dang good. Yeah, and it's it's going to be kind of just a copycat of one I did last time I was on the show with you. It's the Kansas City Chiefs are the best team in this league. I mean, hands down. Um, so impressive. Just Patrick Mahomes is out there just – he's – it's so slow to him. It's so funny, man. He had one rush up the sideline where he managed to get a first down, and the guy coming in just came a little bit too aggressive, stepped out of bounds. He just took off for another 20 yards. Like, see, dude, it's just so easy and that's, for him at this point. And it's just, it's so that's impressive a, to watch. That's annoying, too, because if you know, if they hit him right there, it's a penalty. So I'm like, but okay. I'd rather, I'd rather lay him out than right there than and get the penalty. Me, too. And, and so, that, like, someone and showed like a, your guy, Aaron Rodgers, used to do it all the time with the 12 men on the field. Oh, so great. you find a loophole if you could rush the offense back up and snap the ball while the, the defense is still making adjustments. They showed and, it. And, and so when you can do those things, take advantage of them. Go ahead. They're in your favor. Patrick Mahomes just taking advantage of what's there for him. So I hear you. I'd lay him out too, though. I would. Every it's time. funny because someone posted a video when we played the Chiefs last, and it was like, lay him out like Green Bay did. And and exactly, he's running on the sideline, and Green Bay laid him out. And I don't, I think they call it a penalty, but I'm like, you know, it's worth oh, it. I remember uh, when you guys faced the 49ers back in the day with Colin Kaepernick, and they were scrambling around everywhere. They we don't do good at rushing quarterbacks. No, but they actually got like, "What's your game plan?" And and you guys are like, "Just hit him." Just hit him. Yeah, yeah. he's gonna scramble around. We're just gonna hit him. Like we're just gonna keep hitting him, and that that'll do the trick sometimes. So, you know, it's funny that it's funny that um. Jordan Love and, and Patrick Mahomes had the same amount of interceptions, I believe, this year. And and everyone's like, oh, Jordan Love interceptions, but no one's talking about it with Mahomes. I'm like, I'm like well, Mahomes has earned the right of respect. Let's talk about let's talk about um how our quarterback has more uh touchdown passes than than, than Patrick Mahomes. And but no, I know. Anyways, yeah. anyways, I digress. Let's get our, uh, I guess our week, our top, our top, um, week seven power rankings, and I guess we'll go from one to five since you already said the Chiefs are the best football team. One hundred percent. I I I moved them up this week. I had them at number two, or three last week. I put them at number one. They beat the Forty ers They beat them pretty handily, um, on the road in, in a in a in a hostile. Place to play against a good coach. They are injury prone. But like I said, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to give the benefit of the doubt for that. They went out there and they beat the team. I got the Chiefs number one. I'm guessing you have the Chiefs number one as well. 100%. Chiefs are the team to beat for everybody in the league right now. And they, you know, you, you keep hearing knocks on them. You hear keep hearing criticism about their talent and this and that, whatever. And still, they're just winning. They're just out there winning games left and right. So, yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's all that matters. My number two team is the Detroit Lions. Um, they go in and, and murder the Cowboys on live TV, and then they go and they play the Vikings, and they beat them on the road. Um, Jared Goff is playing the best football of his career. He had a really good year last year. He, I mean, he's like 16 of 16, you know, 17 of 18, not missing a lot of throws, very efficient. This team wins on defense. They The special teams, it's well coached. I think Ben – was it Ben Johnson? I think he's gone next year. Um, I got the Lions number two, and I don't think – I think it's hard to put anybody else there at this uh, point. I mean, I have the Ravens at number two. I still think the AFC is just a powerhouse, and um, uh, there's multiple AFC teams that are just better than the NFC. However, the Lions, man, they are making a case for themselves. But I saw the Ravens at number two. I think they're the real deal. Who do you got number three? And this is where it's kind of hard for me because, like I said, I'm so high on the AFC, but I think Detroit has earned that spot for me. I think, like you said, Ben Johnson is doing some good work up there, and they're you got to give credit where credit's due. Jared Goff is playing top-notch football right now. 
I got the Vikings at number three. I had them number one last week. Um, they dropped two two spots for me this week because they lost to the Lions at home. Not a bad loss. Um, it's a game they should have won. I mean, they they get kind of gave it away at the end there. Um, but they played well enough to win. I shouldn't say should have won, but it, they played well enough to win. They're still tough. I think their defense is really surprising this year. That's how good they were. And Sam Darnold's going to resurrect his career a little bit. Um, it's just one season, so we'll see. And if they sign him for next year, I know they got J.J. McCarthy, who I don't think is going to be very good. But number four, I have the Baltimore Ravens, a team that you've been high on all year long. Um, they're a good football team. They tried to give this game away the other day in the fourth. They, they gave it 21 points in the fourth quarter. Um, as they usually try to give it away. But um, I got the Ravens at number four. Antma says, if Detroit doesn't win it all, I will be shocked. You know, they're very strong. and They're very, very strong. And I think they could win it. I you know um, they should have beat the 49ers last year, and they could have they should have been in the Super Bowl last year, and they missed their opportunity. So, um they're very hungry, very well talented, well coached, and uh, they do a lot of things right. So, I, I wouldn't, I would be shocked if it's anybody but the Chiefs because they win every freaking year, and it's really annoying. But um, I could see the Lions definitely uh, going and, and representing the NFC. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think they're hands down the best team on the NFC side, um, and it's their shot this year because, like you said, Ben Johnson is going to leave and he's going to take a head coaching position. And I feel that he is what drives a lot of that success on the offense. So, um, could be Dallas Cowboys' the next head coach. Let's hope not, but yeah, that would be a we'll good see. move by the Cowboys if they made it. So, that would be as much as Ryan thinks I hate him for some reason. <laughs> I really don't. It's he's just taking he shots at the so. Um, Whatever. I mean, he like he, he likes to stir the pot. I don't give that, but he's a good dude. He just likes to stir the pot. Dude, dude I'm a he's Bears a, he's fan. A, my my pot's frozen over. Like you're not, he's a, st- <laughs> you're not stirring anything. He's an angry Cowboys fan. Um, who do you got? Number four. Number four, I have the Buffalo Bills. Like I said before, man, this was supposed to be a rebuilding year. However, they found themselves to kind of be forming into like a run first team and. Josh Allen, I believe, is the only quarterback this year without an interception thrown. So if we're talking wow. about playing top-notch football, he is on top of his game right now, and they're still rock and rolling. I believe they're 5-2, and two, top of their division. Um, I don't see the other teams in their division giving them much of a of a hard time. So, yeah, I think they definitely make my top five for sure at number four. Yeah, I'm still talking about Detroit here. It says they, they're looking like the most complete team. You know, that's, that's one thing I talked about, you know, that before the season is is they can beat you on defense, they can beat you on offense, they can beat you on special teams. Um, they're all three phases. They always – coaches always talk about um, all three phases, and, and Detroit does all three phases really well. So – And then he said if Kansas City wins, <laughs> well, if Kansas City wins, <laughs> it's probably the most probable outcome at the moment. Patrick I, Mahomes is that damn good. Aunt Miss, I keep saying it. Um, I agree with you. If they win, it's it's got to be rigged. Um, obviously joking, but I, I I just can't stand that Kansas City keeps winning it all. I know, but it's it's greatness, man. It's right in front of us. They got everything. They got the the good head coach. They got the good quarterback. They got good talent on their team. Still, it's all clicking. The defense still. is good. It, it, they just yeah, it's they'll just... win in different ways, and it's it's really hard to beat that damn team and they've done it now for a couple of years in a row. It's, it's mind boggling. I mean, uh, we'll get through our fifth power ranking and then I, I want to kind of talk about the landscape of the NFL with you real quick, but okay. yeah, let's do number five. Number five. I got the Green Bay Packers and last week I had the Texans at number five. We just beat them. The Packers. I got number five. Um, Love back, love throwing touchdown passes. He made a beautiful pass. Oh, man, I don't know if you saw it. Beautiful pass. I jumped up off the couch and said that was a thing of beauty. Right out of the fingertips of the defense to craft in the end zone with a diving catch. Amazing. Um, He's been playing aggressive. I like it. I like our defense really impressed me, though, this week. 
They they held Stroud to 87 yards. They uh, they gave up Mixon 115 yards, but you can run all you want. If your quarterback ain't throwing the ball on us, then you're not going to win the football game. And um, we got to clean up the mistakes and the interceptions, but this team has a uh, has a good chance, and uh, I am in the top five. Yeah, and I think, you know, your marbles are jiggling a little bit. I think that's your fandom kind of coming into play. And, and Hey, he Craig had him in the top biased. five two weeks ago. So he I'm did. Just saying. He did. No, I hear you. And, you know, I, I just got to say, like, my top, uh, my fifth would be the Vikings. Then. I think uh, the Lions and the Vikings are the two. I already have them up here, the Lions and the Vikings. <laughs> so, but. Yeah, I mean, no. And then, like like I said, for me, it's it's Kansas City, it's the Ravens, and it's the Bills that are true contenders and then the lions have made a case for themselves and you know i just i can't keep denying minnesota week after week they're just damn good um you're you're still up there though too but i just i don't feel that good about the packers as we're as top well. 10 definitely i i'm yeah. five but um i don't think you get 10 better teams than us um so but i don't want to talk about the landscape, the landscape of, the of the nfl it's really interesting because you know, I'll ask you, who are the Super Bowl – I mean, who are the quarterbacks in this league that have a Super Bowl ring right now? You got Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> okay. Which he's at the end of his career. End of his career. You have – uh, let's see. Let me go through the teams here and think. You got Joe Flacco. Who's at the end of his career. <laughs> Backup quarterback right now. You have hmm, – it's not Dallas. We know that. Um, definitely not. Sorry, Ryan. Is that no? There's got to be more. Is that no? You got sorry, Stafford. Stafford is another one. He's also towards the end of his career. I mean, he's still playing all right. But is that it? Three? No, there's there's another two. Two. You know, one's the obvious one that has three of them. Oh, Patrick Mahomes, and is in the prime of his career. Yeah. And it's not going away in anytime soon. And the other one is Russell Wilson. Oh, who Russell just, Wilson. Who just started. but was Who should have season. two if they ran the ball at the one-yard line. But listen, that, listen, man. This is what I'm saying, though. It's everybody against Patrick Mahomes. And, like, the only reason Matt Stafford has one is because Joe Burrow beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC Championship that year. And the Cincinnati Bengals are a much more beatable team than the Kansas City Chiefs are. It's just the Bengals have matched up well against them and, and they happen to get one out of them. And Matt Stafford is the guy that truly benefit from that AFC championship yeah. win by the, by the Bengals. Right. So um, it's rough, man. It, it's really rough. You have teams like the 49ers that have gone all in and not had the success of winning one. You know what I mean? And so if I'm the lions right now, yeah, I'm making a trade for one of these top defensive ends for sure, especially if mine just yeah. went down. You're go out and get need Jason. Everything go you're going to need to be firing on all cylinders. Go out every phase and of the call game. The, you're going to need uh, good coaching. You're going to need it all. The Browns to even stand a chance against this guy because he's he's winning every year. He's winning every week. You know what I mean? So it's it's so hard. It's such an uphill battle for I feel the rest of the NFL, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. So when it comes to teams like Dallas. I talked about the three things you need, health, talent, and luck. Like a lot of these teams are going to be depending on getting really lucky. Because the Chiefs plays have a lot everybody, into it. Yeah, the Chiefs have everybody beaten on it. And if, if we if we quarterback. if we really want to think about it, this might be the worst quarterback group in the NFL we've seen in a really long time. Well, the NFC is like wide open and this is what Hiwaska does to you. Like, why would Rodgers go to the AFC? It's, it's, it just, it makes no sense. You were a top dog here. You know what I mean? And now who's top dog? Jared Goff? You have Kirk Cousins, Brock Purdy out there? Like, um, Hurts? You have Dak Prescott, I guess you got to mention out there. But like, these top NFC quarterbacks, uh, they're not unbeatable. Whereas, like, the AFC side, between Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, and even throw C.J. Stroud in there now. Aaron Rodgers is on that side now, and I know he's not playing that great, but um, just to give him the benefit of the doubt, Russell Wilson's there. Like, you have a handful of good quarterbacks, whereas 
on this side, I don't know. I think the whole NFC is kind of for the taking. And that's where I find this interesting because you could really – someone's going to do it. One of these teams is going to do it. They're going to have a quarterback that's going to be so good that they're just going to start powerhousing every year, I think, because the opportunity is there for it. So Green Bay, another Jordan Love? Well, so <laughs> I know we you. as Bears fans oh, think man. it's, it's going to be Caleb Williams. Yeah. We brought up the fact that, like, well, what if it is Jordan Love? It would drive me absolutely insane. You know what I mean? But yeah. right now, Jared Goff's who you have to be better than. And it's not, you know, Brock Purdy is on a team that's very well balanced. You could put a lot of quarterbacks in that position that are better than Brock Purdy. And they'll have a lot of success. Um, but, I just think yeah, in general, going going from the, the quarterbacks where you used to, we grew up watching, I mean, this is probably the worst quarterback group. And they talk about the offensive scoring has been down and all it's, Probably because this is the worst off quarterback group we've seen in a long time, where we've seen all those legends retire or they're at the end of their careers, and we've get some. We have got a, a lot of new guys, and it's just these are kind of the 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 ebbs and flows of the NFL. Um, and they talk about how is running the ball going to be back in back in style instead of throwing the ball, and um, so it'll be interesting to see. But like, yeah, you're right. The, the quarterback room is way better on the AFC than the NFC. Hands yeah. down. It's not even and close. It's, it's kind of weird because it's like, you know, all these rules changes that happen, you're kind of seeing the back end effect of it now. I know Tom Brady mentioned it once. He said he had to study his ass off. Yeah. Like, you had to be a master of your craft. Now you can go in there, toss up lollipop balls, and get pass interference calls and have success. And so, you know, now you can throw the guys over the middle, and they can't get obliterated like I remember um, Kurt Warner almost quit when he threw Anquan Bolden that touchdown, and he got just sandwiched. Had to get oh. his jaw rewired, and oh. he threw that guy dead. That used to be a real yeah. thing in the NFL. You used to yeah. throw your wide receivers dead, and you used to have to avoid doing that. Like there was a lot more that would go into that position, and now you're seeing, like, you look at this draft class with Trevor Lawrence. All five of those quarterbacks, including him, now are no good. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're just Fair, not that. Yeah. And so, so yeah, there is an effect from that that we're kind of feeling now where we're looking at this league going, man, these, like you said, these guys that are at the end of their careers, they played real football. You know what I mean? And like, I know you mentioned we're similar in age. Like we both remember using VHSs and then yeah. DVDs. It wasn't just always wireless. Like, and so, you know, you, this, next generation's kind of got it easier and because of that it is affected their play and this is the nfl like you're going to need top-notch play from your quarterback and so because of that i think they're right like running the ball may become a little bit more of an option if if your guys aren't just that good to do it you know but it also like i said opens up an opportunity for someone to come out here and ball you know yeah really really just take advantage of it um Let's see, pretenders, contenders. I mean, obviously the Chiefs. If, you, if you're looking at the right now, it looks like the Chiefs are going to win it again. Um, I don't believe ball. I don't believe in Lamar Jackson in the playoffs. I think Houston has the potential to maybe beat Kansas City, but they've got to start playing like they did last year. Buffalo's an interesting one to me. If it wasn't for a coin flip, then maybe maybe Buffalo beat him a couple years ago. Yep. Um, I think that's probably your AFC championship again, Buffalo, Kansas City. It's very but likely. You look what go you, look at, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I mean, go look at the NFC West. Seattle's leading it with four at four and three. Um, Atlanta's and, and Tampa Bay are tied. I think I said Atlanta's probably gonna win that division, but Tampa Bay's pretty pretty tough. The commanders probably win the East unless Philly or Dallas turn it on and the NFC North is a toss up between a lot of the teams there to win it. So, yeah. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think about my bears team? Ooh. What do I think about bears? Well, team? We just had a bye week. So, you know, we came out for two weeks where we upscored our opponents pretty well. We dominated both games against two very bad defenses. I believe each week they were the worst defense, but still that's what you would want, right? You would want to go out and dominate a bad defense. Right. But um yeah, and now we you were know, in a bye week, but like how do you I think from afar as a Packers fan, yeah. what do you think about where we're at? 
Well, it's funny because so many people like to go, you didn't play nobody good. And it's like, okay, well, I don't make my schedule. This isn't college. I don't get to pick what teams I play. Everybody's pretty good, too. Like, it is any given Sunday. Yeah. Not every week is just a guaranteed win. You still have to go out there. Yeah. And and you, and, you, and and when you, when you're a good team expecting to win, you play a bad team. You want to see them. You want to see them beat them down, right? So you did what you did. You you beat the Panthers. They're a terrible football team. I've told you that um, Caleb Williams has progressed from week one. Um, is he where he needs to be yet? No, but I think there's progression there. Your defense has been good. It's one of those things. It's, it's kind of like they're not as good as the Ravens' defense, but they're always, always pretty much had a really well-rounded defense. They play physical. They play tough. They get after the quarterback. Um, I think, I think your team is exactly where they need to be right now. Four and two. Um, I think they've a little shocked me with that. I expected maybe a two and four or f- three and three. Like yeah, I said, I predicted I predicted three and three at this point, so they're a game ahead. Of a little Brian. bit ahead, of what you are, what you had them. I think Caleb Owens has progressed, and we saw him week one, and I said, "Wow, if that's what they got looking forward to, ouch, that's not an NFL quarterback." But we've seen him progress. We've seen him stay in the pocket. We've seen him, we've seen him run out of the pocket and make throws when he needs to make them. Um, sometimes he tries to make those throws and throws into the triple coverage and gets it picked off. That's things he's going to have to learn. I do think the team respects him. Uh, I think he's learned he's he's have enough leadership skills for that locker room, which my biggest thing was him was not his talent. His talent's been there, right? We've seen him make some good throws and make some critical moves. It's been the it's just this is guy work ethic. Is it there? And that was Craig's biggest thing. Um, I think you've seen him progress. And I think it's what, exactly what you want. He hasn't he hasn't lit it up, but he's looked good against the bad teams. Um and I think this at four and two, the Bears have got to be pretty happy where they're at, honestly. Yeah, and this is why I have a lot of confidence in him because I've seen, for me, this year was very big about the eye test. I've seen a lot yeah. of little stuff from him that I've been very impressed with. For example, just calling out blitzes at the line, walking up to the linemen, pointing at guys, and those are the guys that are actually coming. We didn't see that with Trubisky or Fields. They weren't good enough. They were still trying to. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they were relying more on their coaches than Caleb yeah. is. I've seen him trot to the sidelines, chewing out our offensive coordinator because the play call wasn't coming in fast enough. So now you're setting expectations for your coordinators and your coaches. And to me, that that is huge. Um, I want a guy that can overcome <laughs> our coaches just because I don't really believe in them. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? And your so, coaching staff's so, not very good, in my opinion. No, and... and in mine either, but they are doing the things that they need to do to be where they're at. It's just, can they continue to do them? And that's why I think just for the NFC North in general, or at least us as Bears fans, all of our division games are in the back end of our season. Yeah. Um, it, it, and that's going to make it interesting. It is. It's very interesting, but it's also very exciting because now yeah. I feel way better off facing these good teams since we blew out some of these bad teams. And like I said, it kind of lets us know where we stand. So now I'm more ready for, the next challenge and the next step instead of kind of being intimidated. I'm kind of excited to see. Yeah. Can we go out there and play well against, you yeah. know, our division my, stacked? Like, let's my, see my, yeah. My question is, is for the bears is, can they, can they live up to the pace of our, of our, of our division? Um, can they keep up with it? And I think it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for anybody at this point. We're all, we, we you know, no one has a losing record. Um, you're four and two in your last place in your division. That's insane. Um, so we'll see. And I think it's it's gonna it's it's made for the the ending of our seasons to be really really entertaining. Yeah, I really really like how the schedule is set up. So I just thought it was interesting, and you know, especially for our from our point of view, for our benefit, it allows um the most slopped together part of our team, which is our offense. Like we got a lot of moving pieces this year new quarterback we got you know a, a, another receiver in keenan allen we got a, another receiver in roma dunze that just joined the team our backup tight end gerald everett is new so um our offensive line is kind of in shambles we got a new running back so there's a lot of new pieces it allows them the opportunity 
to gel as much as they can before we get to the games that really truly matter. And so, you know, I was hoping to lean on our defense early on this year, which we did. And I'm hoping that there is a shift where we could lean a little bit more on the offense as the year goes on and, and actually compete with you guys. So, yeah, I think it's exciting for this en- entire division to be where all, you know, where every team's at. Yeah. You know, um, we tell me we're going to lose, lose love and be five and two right now. I, I would take it, you know? So, oh, 100%. um, I think, uh, it's crazy. Cause you look at this division with the quarterbacks, the, the, the talent and the coaching staffs, other than the bears. I don't think like we said, the, the bears coaching is their weakness. Um, it's tough. It's tough. Um, I really like LaFleur. I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. Um, we talk about Ben Johnson. I like I like Dan Campbell. I know you're not a, that big a fan of him, but with Ben Johnson there, and then and then you got uh, uh, O'Connell over there with Brian Flores at, at Minnesota. So the coaching staff on our end is is I think going to be around for quite a while. And, um, unless Ben Johnson leaves for the, the head coaching job, but and like you know, if the Vikings lost their quarterback, well, they lo- did lose their quarterback. They're still good, like you said. You're yeah. five and two with losing Jordan Love, right? And, and because the coaching staff is able to formulate a good game plan, he would get Malik Willis halfway through the week in here and have him have a good game and yeah. whatnot. But like. Okay, so if the Lions lost Jared Goff, I think they'd see a step back. And if the Bears lost Caleb Williams, I think they'd see a step back. Yeah. Which is why I, I keep telling you, Minnesota's love right. is love is uh, not that great. He's good. He's a solid good. Um, you're going to find yourself in a position where he's going to be the reason why you need to win, and I don't think he's going to be. And um, that's why I also have my doubts with Minnesota, but – uh, yeah, so uh, and I'm interested to see, like, at the end of the year, if I give you a hypothetical, regardless of contract, like, love straight up for Caleb Williams, would you do it? Because right now, I know what your answer would be, but I want to wait till the end of the year and, <laughs> that and, and see where you kind of stand on that, because I, I do think that you will be finding yourself looking to upgrade the quarterback position at some point. And it's not going to be anytime soon. You just sign the guy. So you're going to yeah. ride it out and be a more balanced type of team and, you know, try and have success that way. So, I you know, and, and this might working. be, it's working. And this might be yeah. one of those situations that like, and I wasn't sold on love last year, the first half of the season, last half, man, this guy continues this. We're going to be great. The first half this year, they sold me. I think he's going to be good. Do I think he's going to be Aaron Rodgers? No. Do I think he's going to be Patrick Mahomes or we win in every year Super Bowl? No. But I think he's going to be a serviceable quarterback that, that could get us over the hump if needed. But I really think it's a lot of it's Matt LaFleur. And um, our, avail- our ability to draft well and develop those players. That's what we do. We don't go hit this free agency and and make big splashes, except that, I mean, this year we did bring in Xavier McKinney, who's been an absolute beast. You know, we, we brought, we, we drafted Evan Williams, uh, a rookie who's been the top McKinney. Uh, what is it? Uh, Xavier McKinney and, and our other safety is a rookie. And most games have been number one, number two rated safeties in the NFL. <laughs> like that's how much Evan, this guy's been playing Evan Williams. He's been a beast, making good plays. What or just we just draft well and we develop well. And our our GM, I really like Brian Gutenkust. And uh, I don't know. I think we're set up well for the future. Our team is the youngest team in the league, so that yeah, bowls well for us. In a row. Yeah, that bowls well for us. You will need a gamble oh. at some point if you yes, want we, to. Yes, yes. I, I mm, legit. I, you know what I mean? I agree because we don't make those moves sometimes. So I'm like, hey, let's go out. I need I, to, though. Yeah, you. Will. I've heard rumors of us. Going out and getting uh, Miles Garrett, I'm like, make it happen, make yeah. it happen. Yeah, no, but you, definitely, and because you're the youngest team in the league, because you're set up in that yeah. fashion, where you're still having success in that manner, um, yeah, balance it out a little bit more, get some proven talent, and then that's going to make a difference, especially at like a defensive exactly. position. If you plan on actually going 
far with this thing. So, like I said, otherwise you might hit a wall where you need certain things to happen. And I just, I, I'm not a big believer. Um, but you know, like I said, that luck part. You know, luck plays a lot into uh, winning football games and winning Super Bowls. So, I'll take it. You know. Yeah. For um, sure, but. Yeah, all right. That's off to you guys. So. It's been a good year so far, but you know we still got a long way to go. Definitely. So, all right. Well, I think that's going to wrap up the show, Paul. I want to thank you again for coming on. Um, such short notice. Um, he may be our new Tuesday guy because I don't. Craig Craig has a hard time finding it. Hopefully not. I, I like Craig. Commit to but he has. I know. I know. I, I, it's better what having more. Works for you more is that you come one. on late, so at least I put my kid down. And this is my free time. <laughs> free I got to make videos at some point, though. You know what I mean? So yeah, I pop out content on my channel constantly. Um, well, my schedule will change in January. I'll have to be going into work at four, so oh, it's yeah, gonna be I mean, a little at, tough. But dude, at some um, point, we'd love to have you on our channel too. I would, you know, maybe around one of the Green Bay games if you could make it. If we could figure something out, so. Um, but yeah, I, it'd be I great to do it. We, we to, should live watch the game it. and beyond. <laughs> no, be... you don't want to see me. <laughs> doing I'm not doing that. <laughs> My channel will just bomb. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. That was our week seven takeaways or power rankings as well. And a little landscape talk of the NFL. Hope your team's doing good. Unless you're in the NFC North, I hope you all lose the rest of the way out. Or you're a um, fan. Or if you're a Cowboys fan. Good luck. <laughs> All right, guys. God bless. And remember to keep it outspoken. All right. Perfect. Ugh.